Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at another Yamaha. So I previously took a look at the TK75HE, all effect, the TK75SE Special Edition. And today we're taking a look at the TK75, just the standard one, not the Special Edition. This one has choices for better switches, either a Phoenix or a um, Pegasus, which we have in here. These are silent switches, so we're going to have a silent experience. Um, it has a, a, this keycap set. I've known it as Programmer. I actually have a couple of these keycap sets, which I like. But um, so far, the Gamma K series has been interesting. Uh, obviously, Gamma K, I think, is well known for the LK67, a keyboard that we all if we've been in it for a while, we all know and love and have modded at one point or another. If we had the three mode, we had to learn how to avoid the breaking the three three mode switch, taking it apart the right in the right order so that switch wouldn't break. Anyway, we've got one with the Pegasus switch, and it's the TK75 with the programmer keycap. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got in the box. All right, so let's see what we've got in the box. We have a small user guide, and it looks like it's all the keyboard settings and the function key combination function list. All right, and it tells us how to connect in the different connectivity modes. We have a nylon braided USB-A to USB-C cable. We have your standard wire, and switch, and keycap puller. We've got five extra keycaps in case we want to modify the navigation column. And we have three spare Pegasus switches, which is very nice of them to put some extra switches. Who knows what could go wrong with the switch? So the Pegasus is a silent tactile, has a medium bump. Um, I would say medium weight spring as well, probably 45 to 50 grams. It has a very nice bottom mount, and um, it's not as mushy as some of the other uh, more affordable uh, silent switches is actually pretty good. And it's almost perfectly silent. No ping in there whatsoever. It's actually a nice looking switch. Looks like we have the thin pins in there, three pins. And dust proof stem and they are branded gamma k nice switch and here we are with the gamma k tk75 with the pegasus switches so we have a silent keyboard it, it almost completely silent this is one of the few choices in in stock keyboards that actually have silent right off the bat there's been so many times that people have asked for keyboards to come silent and while there are a handful um, they're in the minority it's more of the exception rather than the rule that you have the option of silent switches now these are silent tactile so you still get that feedback that tactility but you're really only hearing tiny amounts of sound from just the action that's going on, the movement of the plastic of the key, you know, the, the switch going down. Now, these are probably not lubed. Lubing them can make a slight difference with silent switches, um, but it's not going to, like, make it quiet altogether because you have just a multitude of moving parts. So there's going to be some sound, but the sound is it's truly, truly minimal. I mean, most people... Especially like in an office environment, it's really not going to go past a cubicle because that's how low it is. Now we do have a detachable knob with a very, uh, very um, short collar. Some of these have taller collars, some of them have shorter collars. But it is a potentiator meter D knob, a six millimeter. Uh, most guitar knobs will work as replacements for those, and there's tons of. There's a, a six pack on Amazon for like $17, I think, that has like six knobs in different colors that will fit just fine. Uh, now, obviously, we've many of us have seen this layout before. 
Uh, we've got a delete key right there. We've got a three key column, navigation column. Um, we've got the Gamma K logo here. The back, we've got the recessed USB-C port. Below, we have the uh, pocket for the USB 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And we have a pair of flip down feet, as well as an on and off switch for the mobile mode. As I've opened these up many times, I guess we can go ahead and open this up real quick to see um, our hybrid uh, sandwich mount slash tray mount. All right, so taking off the top cover, we see here we have yeah, a steel plate, unfortunately, but that's what we've got. It is technically a sandwich mount, but those strips right there, um, I don't know if they're offering any, if any flex whatsoever, but all right, let's... Uh, let me see. Let's lift up here and see what we've got. So, yeah, we also have some strips here. Though, I mean, it could be called a gasket mount. It is more of a sandwich mount, but it there is no room. I mean, these gaskets actually just make it tighter. Um, it doesn't really... Gaskets are supposed to provide, you know, like... Gaskets are supposed to act kind of like shock shock absorbers on a vehicle you know to catch any rough you know, terrain and soften it up so that the ride is not bumpy but having these strips here i mean it's technically like i said a gasket sandwich mount but it's uh it's just there's not enough room physically in the case now we do have a uh looks like a sheet of neoprene feels like if i had to guess we do have a 4000 milliamp hour battery all right running at 3.7 volts so pretty standard battery if we ever needed to replace it we can see we got the hole for the um, 2.4 dongle and i guess it's pressure fit because i don't see a magnet and we still got these screws. It looks like they're locked into place, which is fine. Um, we have six screws holding the plate to the PCB assembly. And it does look like we have what feels like a possible pour-on foam between the steel plate and the PCB. And the PCB, as we can see, does not have any, um, any support for screw-on stabilizers. All right, to put this back together, we want to make sure first that we're going to fish that USB-C port through the porthole and then make sure we go down nice and easy, ensuring we're not pinching the battery cable and that this switch is going to be going out of the hole for the switch as well as the pocket for the 2.4. Everything looks good. Go ahead and snap the case back into place. Work clips on the top. Work clips on the bottom. And then we can go ahead and tighten up the screws. Try not to over tighten as this is going into plastic. The dongle back in and put the knob back on. So let's see what we've got for keycaps and stabilizers. Uh, here we see the Pegasus switch again. It's a very nice, I would call it a medium, maybe a medium plus tactile bump. It has probably a 50 plus gram weight spring and it's just a it's a decent tactile silent switch. I actually like how it looks too. 
on the PCB, we see that we just have a bare PCB, which is just a little bit odd nowadays. As, I mean, even taking old stock, opening them up, and adding a layer of IPX or IXPE foam on top of a layer of PET makes a big difference. I mean, they call it the hi fi layers, but it really it takes keyboards that might just sound mediocre and it makes them sing. I mean, even the IXPE foam, I mean, it's the PE foam, PE foam mod has been very popular for a while because it does add a bit of pop to the, uh, to the sound. So it's, it would be nice to see that. Looking at the stabilizers, we can see that these are stabilizers that we could never blame of being unlubricated. These are definitely lubricated. Um, they're over lubricated in my opinion um, after uh, a stock sound test. When I do come back to this keyboard to mod it, I will definitely be, be cleaning those stabilizers up. Um, you want to... It's one of those things where a little goes a long way. Using too much can be Bad. In this case, when you have too much lubrication, it can attract a lot of the dust, the grime that's in the air, and over time, it can create like a mud that will just get those stabilizers sticking and ticking and not working as they should. So, having just enough lubrication on the stabilizers, I think, is is key for good performance and good sound. So um, we can see that sheet below there that what felt like neoprene to me. Uh, of course, um, as plate mounted stabilizers, they do have a bit of a looseness. So the tolerances aren't quite that tight, but it's not making much to any of a difference. No ticking. Oh, that one does have a bit of a tick. That one has a clear tick, actually. Yeah, it... At the, too much grease can actually cause stabilizers just not to work properly. This one actually sounds like it has a click because it could use a pad above the PCB. It really sounds like it's the stem of the stabilizer just striking the PCB. That's not necessarily a tick, it's just that's a putting, whether it be screw and stab pads or just strips of uh, band-aid that'll take care of that that'll eliminate that so um yeah i definitely i, I want to i'll do a stock sound test today but at some point i will come back to this and do just a few little things that i think will take this from an almost completely silent keyboard to a basically silent keyboard and that's going to include just a few little things uh, though one of them would be moving the switches um, because I think that will help a tad um, with that little bit of sound that we hear. Um, there's a couple other things that I think that we can do and it will make for the, the sound that you will hear will be more of a reverberation, more of a uh, um, a switch that I'll be reviewing shortly and kind of kind of talk of the difference of that. Because there's silent, there's quiet. And then there's loud. Well, I guess there's silent, there's quiet, there's normal, and there's loud. Loud has become kind of hi-fi, but not all switches need to sound the same. And I'm going to be reviewing a switch that I feel kind of breaks the mold of all of these linear switches that we've been getting that all kind of sound and feel quite similar. So it'll be nice to have a bit of a difference. But anyway, let's... uh. Let's work on what we've got in front of us. We have this uh, very familiar 75% layout. Um, 
We do uh, unfortunately have a sandwich uh, steel plate. It would be nice for this to be to have something else, but at least because of the switches, we don't have any ping. It's definitely a solid typing experience. There is no, I mean, there might be the tiniest of give, the tiniest, but I think it just might be my desk mat. I'm trying to keep it to the keyboard, and I really just think it's my desk mat giving a give. So, um, though the silent switches do kind of do soften out the bottom out somewhat. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Gamma K TK75, an 81 key, three modes, 75% silent keyboard with a knob. It has a hybrid sandwich gasket mount steel plate and a neoprene sheet below the PCB, as well as a foam between the PCB and the plate. It has a south facing three and five pin hot swap PCB without screw and support and no layers above it. It is preloaded with Pegasus silent witches and die sub PBT cherry keycaps that measure 1.4 millimeters in thickness. The keyboard weighs 1,005 grams and has a chin that sits at 21 millimeters with the back that sits at 31 and a half millimeters providing for a default typing angle of six and a half degrees. Flipping out the second set of feet, we'll take that back to 36 millimeters and change the angle of typing to eight and a half degrees. Folding out the final set of feet, we'll raise the back up to 42 millimeters and change the typing angle to 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRP is for $79.99 on Gamma K's website. All right, so taking a look at the software, uh, I'd already installed the Gamma K driver, so it uses the same software as it does for the other TK75 models. So the settings are basically the same, except for the HE screens aren't here, obviously, for the HE version. But we have the top layer, which we can rebind layers. Um, and then we have function settings. And you'll see the ones that are marked out in red are ones that you cannot or it's forbidden to change they're ones that have already been programmed to do specific things as you see the function key and the windows key and so on but you could still select the ones that are gray and map them to the keys that you want to as i like to map insert to delete we have the basic macro editor and it's actually got a macro that I created on a previous TK75. Still saved, so it looks like I can share them across different boards. Then we have the light settings, so we can select the different lights. We can download lights from their online account, and we can do the per key RGB for the lights. And when we come to the about screen, we see that there is no firmware update for this particular one. I mean, we've got a very familiar 75%. Um, it's gone by many names, but it is a common one. But it is also, I want to say late 2020, early 2021, this keyboard came out. All right, so the original version of this keyboard appears to have been released sometime in 2021. Um, so it's going on three years old now. And... Um, Yes, it can be modded to sound real good. It is a, a workhorse. I have a few of them and they still work just fine. I've modded, I think all but one of them. I've modded because it's just one of those boards that <clears throat> simple to mod and it can sound pretty decent. Um, and one of them I bought in aftermarket plate. And that one actually had some flex. So, because it was a, um, let's say a Palm or PC, I can't recall. But that one actually had some flex, which made the experience much better. With the steel plate, standard switches, mm, the silent switches. I'd like to think that Gamma K is just moving out old inventory. But I would like to see these older keyboards a little bit cheaper as 
for the price this keyboard is, there's 75% aluminum keyboards that fully loaded, keycaps, switches, aluminum, um, free mode, more battery, uh, aluminum. I mean, just so it's it's kind of hard when you know a keyboard for what this MSRP right now for you can get an aluminum keyboard it's truly hard to make an argument of why to pay $80 for this keyboard when when keyboards like this aluminum 75% free mode is sold for basically the same price so don't get me wrong I've enjoyed Gamma K keyboards I've got quite a few of them um, I've had several over the years but where I see other brands really you know keeping up and or not only keeping up setting the pace really um, for these <laughs> amazing in-stock keyboards that I mean and I hate I feel like a broken record sometimes that even a year ago, you know, there would have been a group buy keyboard, something we're going to have to pay, wait months, maybe a year or more to get the keyboard when we can just pick our color, buy it, and it's shipped to us within the week uh, nowadays, even sooner sometimes because they're available on Amazon as well. Sometimes that is overnight. So it's hard to justify the price for this keyboard that back in 2021 when this came out, at this price, it would have been like, hey, that's a pretty good price, um, especially with the brass plate. Because uh, I remember these being sold for up to $180. Um, so, yeah, back then, I mean, this is based on those prices. But based on the, what, what the market is today, it's just hard to justify the price of this board. Now, if it was half the price. I'd say, yeah, especially if you want to learn how to mod keyboard, how do you want to see the different things that you could do if you want to actually either find the, the STL file for the plate or make your own and, you know, print out a different plate out of, I don't know, PLA, TPU, not TPU, um, out of PLA, ABS, carbon fiber, whatever, to make a, you know, a plate that actually has a little bit of bend to it. Well, then you've got that option. Um, you want to add the hi-fi layer, something that I think I'll do when I come back to it. Um, although, yeah, no, I think I think adding part of the hi-fi layer will actually help make this even quieter. Because that's going to be the aim, to make this one in particular as quiet as possible. I've got the three different ones. I've got the three different ones, so this one I'll keep silent, and we'll see what we do with the other two. Maybe one really hi-fi and one more thoughty. We'll see. So anyway, this is my look at the uh, TK75. Um, at this point, I think I've taken a look at the TK75 SE and the TK75 HE. So, um, and I've done them all at once as well. So I do hope that you enjoyed the video. Like I said, I will come back to it. I'm going to probably do all three, make this one more silent, make the other ones, I don't know, pop in a different way uh, because they are fun to mod. But right now i'm going to leave you with the stock sound test as much as you can hear of the keys with the silent keys uh, i do hope that you enjoyed the video if you did throw me a thumbs up a subscribe it really goes a long way and i'd really appreciate it so for right now i want to wish you awesome people an amazing day and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on